All right, Chichi, we're going to try something a little different this week, bro. You know, usually it's you and me on this, you know, front page Friday. We're having a good time going Mm -hmm. back and forth with our lists. But this week, really in honor of the Bengals getting into the Super Bowl, we have some correspondents out there, some good buddies (laughs) that we're going to bring into the show this week. This guy is one of my dear friends, been a dear friend for a long time now, you know, since I've probably been with the Reds. 1998 till now, if I'm doing the math right, that's a lot of years, 20 some years. <laughs> um, you know, um, this guy, Reds broadcaster, has done a ton of different things, though. He's been at Super Bowls, done basketball, he's done everything. And he's a legend in Cincinnati, but he's also a legend with me as a dear friend of mine. So we're bringing in Jim Day, and he's yeah. going to break it down for us. Tell us what's going on in Cincinnati. What's up, Jimmy? Right. What's up, brother? I'll give you the true Casey intro. What's up, brother? <laughs> So good. I said, hey, Jimmy, before we get going, before we get going, I just thought of that um, I had this. Uh, I got the Joe Nuxall award a few years back. And yeah. Kim Nuxall is a good friend of mine, too, who's Joe's son. And uh, and Jimmy Day did a did an impersonation of Sean Casey impersonation <laughs> video, bro. Nice. And it was awesome. <laughs> Jimmy, give us a little give us a little Sean Casey. Could you real quick? And just uh, oh, man. I, I'm I'm out of touch. I, I haven't I haven't done this in a while, but it'd be like, uh, like hey, hey, how you doing, bro? Everything good? Everything good, man? Yeah. Hey, hey, those guys that were out there on the field, they, they they shoot video, right? Right? You know those guys? I love those guys, man. I love those guys. How you doing, brother? Let me do a little summer of that. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. It's so funny. We used to, when Sean and I used to work at the network together, like it was in the very beginning when he came on, he was so excited to talk to the guests and he didn't know how to start a question, which is why he's so, he's so amazing now. He's great at this. But like in the very beginning, he'd be like, hey, so, hey, how's it going, man? And and they'd be like, uh, good. And he'd be like, yeah, good. So, well, um, all right. And <laughs> like 10 minutes later, he'd ask his question and now he's freaking awesome at this it's so oh, funny dude i remember i remember early on the network asking the questions were the hardest thing to do yeah. jimmy i'm sure you do it for a oh, living yeah. bro you ask questions for a living but i remember um evan longoria came on one time and we were going to talk about his foundation was the off season so everyone gets a question and i get go hey evan how you doing man you hey and then you're never supposed to say my question i have for you is but i just went right into that bad technique i'm like the question i have for you is oh shit i forgot what the question was <laughs> That's yeah, it, man. or you'll one of the big problems is answering your own question within the question. Oh, like that's you're a, trying to get them to say what you want, but you say it in the question, and then I'll, you get to the end, like, oh, wait, I got to put a question in here, but I've already really said exactly. And they're like, and the guy goes, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Al Leiter is the master of that. He will, he will <laughs> yeah. answer the question three different ways before yeah. he gets to the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. But hey, we got you on here, Case. Obviously, you guys are close friends. And, Case, you weren't on before, and I'm like, I don't know why you guys didn't do the show together, because I've listened to you two guys do Jim's podcast, and you guys are so amazing together, but, dude, big time of year right now going on in, in, in the Ohio area, so we got an expert on for it, right, Sean? Yeah, man, well, well, first off, we want to know, Jim Day's got the Jim Day podcast, too, which, if you haven't listened to it, please it's tune awesome. into it, it is so, so good, awesome. he got so many good guests, especially if you're a Reds fan, it's it's one of the best things, he gets all those guys on there. We also want to know, before we get started, Jimmy, how come you have so many more subscribers than <laughs> Case and Chinch? We so obviously, true. we're not even, are we worthy to have you on the show, bro? Like, your subscribers are like, six million, we got like 600 people yeah. on YouTube watching and this it's thing. Only our, it's our family, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I got our family members watching. Uh, it's definitely not six million. I mean, we've had uh, over a million downloads. Uh, yeah, but it's not. Wow. It's not six million followers. It's the same people listening over and over. <laughs> it's regional. It's red centric. So you know, you know the fan base in Cincinnati, yeah. man. You, you don't. They don't talk about the Cincinnati Reds much on. MLB Network. <laughs> I try or... to as much as I can. I try to as much as I so can. There, yeah, the fans are starving for you know any Reds content, so they're loyal, and so you know you get a lot of following. You get the it's a Reds back podcast as well, so they're promoting it, so that really helps. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. me and Chicha, like I sent someone on most social media. Please look at this video I just <laughs> yeah. sent out. Come watch our podcast. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. You know, that's listening. how we do it. I was listening to your show when you guys were talking. And you're like, you got all this backing. I just have a producer, and I was like, damn, Sean, that's cold blooded. <laughs> well, you're looking at. I am a to this point. I am a crew of one. Wow. Yeah. 
Dude, Jim, I, Jimmy came in my hotel room. He's like, Case, you want to do a podcast? I'm like, yeah. He comes in, fumbling, stumbling. He's like, oh, let me see what this chord does. And I got two mics here, and I think this is going to work. Let me hit play here. Like, go. You know, I'm like, man, Jimmy, you are you are the producer, the director. <laughs> yeah. You're everything, you know? Yeah, I set up the interviews. I do the interview. I set up the equipment. I edit the podcast. I post the podcast. So, Yeah. Nice. That's you know, awesome. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do in this world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, dude, tell us what's going on in Cincinnati right now, because I know, man, th- wow. I, it seems like this place, the, the, the city's craving for that winter. Especially the oh. Bengals haven't been there in so long. But you're a longtime Cincinnati guy. Can tell us what's going on out there in Cincinnati? It's it's really been unbelievable. I mean, it, it's been unbelievable, Sean. Uh, I haven't seen this much excitement since the Reds traded for this unknown first baseman the day before opening day. Uh, and that player turned out to be you. I haven't seen Ohio this excited since they found out that you didn't kill Bob Feller when you hit him with the ball. <laughs> Play and catch. <laughs> I mean, when they found out that you didn't kill the legend Bob Feller, they were excited. Oh God, but this... <laughs> this is crazy. We had Lance Berkman <laughs> this on. This is way bigger, way bigger news. Yeah. Than we, had, Bob Feller. we had Lance Berkman on, who I guess you guys were playing the Astros at the time when that happened, right? The Bob Feller. Story. No, no, I t- no, like- I told, I told Lance the Bob Feller story at a at a, at a conference oh. a few years ago, and he almost, I thought he was gonna have a heart attack. I was like, you all right, bro? Like, <laughs> it's all he can talk about. He's the best. I've heard it ten times, and I could hear it ten <laughs> yeah. more, fifty more, and laugh every time. The way you tell it. Yeah, so like, is he is he gonna catch the ball? <laughs> oh, down goes Bob Feller. Crowd's going. That guy who's fifty six. He killed Bob Feller. <laughs> anyway, so no good. I can't believe I can't believe it's a true story that almost killed Bob Feller. But it's an absolute <laughs> ridiculous true story. I'm like, what? My career almost ended before it began. Oh my god, it's freaking crazy. Yeah. But anyway, so but, what's Burrow like? Is it like Burrow mania there right now? Like, is he oh, the number I, one never, guy in the world in that I've area? I've never seen anyone take over a town in such a short period of time. I mean, you look at when he wore those uh, the sunglasses to the post game. Yeah. Oh, so good. Everyone went out and bought these sunglasses. <laughs> oh, you, saw, <laughs> you saw news anchors wearing <laughs> these sunglasses on the air like him. They sold out of these glasses. You can't find them anywhere. If he would have gone into the post game with underwear on his head, you'd see people walking around with underwear on their head. I'm not kidding you. He, he has so taken good. over this town. It's it's really unbelievable, and he's done it with a. He's got this quiet confidence about him, and he's just all business. Um, and you know, in the Midwest, they love that stuff. Mm. Um, so he, it, it's it's really been unbelievable. I just watched this video. Um, I don't know if this is the best visual or not, but. Okay. Cincinnati Inquirer, Cincinnati.com, took a bunch of hundreds of videos of fans sending them reactions oh. to when they won the game yeah. and after they won the game. It's unbelievable. I mean, I don't know. You guys can edit this out. I don't know if this oh. is the best. Uh, can I call this up? I'm like Sean Casey trying to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can oh, yeah, you can hear this. Uh, why is the sound not on? Come on, Jim, broadcaster guy. <laughs> so but it's all these reactions of these people. Here we go. So cool. So good. This is on Cincinnati.com. This is four nuns. No. <laughs> four nuns. The sisters are going crazy. This is a basketball game that they're interrupting the game. Oh, that's the big so cool. One. It's people walking around. Now, th- this is over and over and over again. I'm not going to so play great. this whole thing for you. It's like, Dude, this is long. unbelievable. Look at that. You can get it on Cincinnati.com. Yeah. Full plug for them. But it's hundreds of videos that they so put great. together. And it's just people like 30. Look at this guy wow. crying. Look, watch it. Watch this guy. He like celebrates with the kids <laughs> and then he realizes then he starts crying. He just like he like just breaks down and starts crying. Wow. I, I have a oh favorite shot of this guy. Coach Chris Mack is on here. who just left Louisville as a basketball coach. He's on here. He's from Cincinnati, a big Bengals fan. It's so cool. But right after him is my favorite shot. It's this it's this young man in a wheelchair. 
and the euphoria. There's Mac. Watch this kid. <laughs> oh, that's oh great. My gosh, that's so I mean, great. It doesn't get any no, better it than doesn't. that. And you guys, both of you guys talk about fandom in yeah. that in that area. It, like, Case, you do it too. But both of you guys just explain I, what sports mean to that town. Well, I got the chills because, you know, you know, I, I, I just knew what, you know, that meant for that 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 fan base, the fans in Cincinnati, man. There's yeah. I'm so grateful that I played eight years there, Jimmy. Like, like seriously, I'm not kidding you. Like they were the best and they are so passionate for the, oh. for the Reds and for the Bengals and for their teams. And they're just good people, man. They're hardworking yeah. people. And they just, they just, there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of history that's been passed down from grandmothers and grandfathers to oh. grandkids. It's and, definitely and, generational. Know, it's generational. And so I just knew knowing what I've known as a Reds player, knowing what, you know, I know what Joe Burrow's going through. I mean, obviously not that mania, but, it's just really cool to see, you know, the, for the I'm so excited for the city of Cincinnati that they get to cheer for this this Super Bowl and they get to get fired up together and, and bring that energy they always bring. Yeah. And I you know, I've talked to people that they haven't heard from certain friends for 30 years mm. and all of a sudden people are reaching out to people and think about uh, the pandemic we've been going through. We've all been it's been such a sad world and stressed world for for good yeah. reason. And people are just searching for that little Mm. sliver of not only hope but just something to be happy about right. something to let your emotions out and that's sport you know that's sports man you know it i mean sports provides that yeah. and it, it came at a, a great time i mean there's there are people that are doing everything to get long suffering Bengals fans to la there are people paying tens of thousands of dollars to like oh my grand my yeah. grandfather i heard a story of my grandfather he's not in good health but we're getting him to la because wow. we told him that if they go to the super bowl grandpa we're getting you there yeah and there's stories wow. like that over and over just the the pure joy of it is uh it is it's really unbelievable yeah. All right. and it's such an underdog story it's so cool and I, you give credit to the other quarterback on the other side too, because he he deserves to get to a Super Bowl too in uh, Stafford. But just it's since nobody name one single person. You're there, Jim, every day. Name one single person who's like, we got a Super Bowl team this year. N not even oh, close, yeah. right? No, they they knew they were going to be better, and they were a sleeping giant. Anyone that really knows about football, though, I mean, the defensive coordinators. If you would have pulled them, they would have said, "All right." I've looked at some uh, some film of this. They, they, they've got three wide receivers. Um, this is in addition to Joe Burrow. Right. They got three wide receivers. This Jamar Chase guy is one of the top five receivers in the so league right good. now. And if we double team him, well, they're just going to throw it to Boyd. Or they're mm -hmm. they're going to throw it to Higgins. They've got a Uzama, a tight end. And oh, by the way, if they we drop back defensive backs, we're going to run the ball with Mixon. Yeah, who's the best running grown, backs in the league? Like, he's grown so, up. He's you could have pro. Team, you could have pulled the fan base around the NFL, and it's a surprise to them. But I, I guarantee you, if you talk to defensive coaches, they're like, mm. "These guys are loaded. I don't know how we're going to stop them." Mm. So, um, but it is a, a true underdog story. They're probably a year or two ahead of schedule, and they, they did benefit from the AFC, in my opinion, being a little bit down. This year, there's a lot more parity in the NFL this year. Even the number one, you look at the number one seeds in each conference, Tennessee and Green Bay, they, you know, they just weren't super teams. So uh, they just picked the right time, the right year. They made a hit on their, uh, for once they hit on their free agent signings. They drafted well. So, you know, kudos to them, man. They've done it right. They've done it. You know what, I, Jimmy, I think you were saying it too. You know, one thing about the NFL is like, it's a quarterback league. If you don't have a good quarterback, I don't care how good oh, your defense yeah. is. I mean, you could always say, Hey, Trent Dilfer back with the Ravens. That's, you know, that's just, that may never happen again. That was you know, one of the greatest defenses of all. I time. mean, exactly. Yeah. You couldn't move the yeah. ball. Again. Ray Lewis was eating your face off in the backfield every, every play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't yeah. move the ball, but it's a quarterback league. And, and I think with, with Burrow, like winning the national championship at LSU, like, there's a swagger about this dude that's a little different. Oh, I think, smoking you know, a cigar and a post Have you had a chance, Jimmy? To, have yeah. you had a chance to be with him? Uh, you know, I have interview not. him. Yeah, I was around his uh, parents. He was supposed, and this is how locked in Joe Burrow is. He is uh, after he th this past season, he was supposed to be in a suite at Great American Ballpark for Reds game. Well, he just they were having mini camp at the time, so that's why he was in town. Um, so they invited him. We expected to do an interview. I'm up there waiting like four or five innings. No Joe Burrow. I'm up there with his parents right. getting to know them. So I got to know Joe through his parents, but 
they're like, he just texted us and uh, he's he's looking at video right now to practice. Oh my god! So I'm cool. like, what? It's mini camp. It's mini camp. <laughs> if I was seven on seven, they you know they provide me footage of it, so I'm gonna look at. It. He's so locked in. He they, his parents say he doesn't go out much. He doesn't do much. He's not really. You don't see him out socially doing stuff. I mean, you see him walking in with swag, with his sunglasses yes. on and his gear stuff. <clears> but <throat> that's it. I don't know of any stories of well, I saw Joe Burrow last night at the club. Um, I know none of that. He's just totally locked in. So well, I haven't been around him because of that, and he just didn't show up that night. So, <laughs> yeah. but his parents did. He got to know him. A little bit. <laughs> oh, he never made parents. it. He didn't make it for the ninth. He just was like, no, he didn't make it at all the for the whole routes. game. They had a sweep <laughs> for him. They had a sweep. Oh my for gosh! Him that night. Parents got to enjoy it, which is good for them. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing too is like you know when you. Um, when you watch that Chiefs game, you know, it was 21-3 before you knew it. Burrow came back, makes it 21-10. And but you're thinking like, gosh, dang it. Thank God they stopped the Chiefs at, at, at the one-yard line right before they went into halftime. They stopped Tyreek Hill. But the biggest thing was I was like, okay, if the Chiefs keep moving the ball like they're moving it, there's no way the Bengals could f- even figure out a way to, to win this game. And then the Bengals' defense – comes up huge in that second half. What do they hold Mahomes, the 83 yards total offense? Yeah. He was throwing the ball all over the place. They're getting big-time pressure. Like, you know, what about the defense, Jimmy, and, like, what, what they're bringing to the table? Well, they're definitely underrated. And when the season started, um, they, you would have never predicted that they were going to go this far just on their offense alone. But that, that game plan they had in the second half, they just dropped defensive backs back and dare them to run, which Kansas City doesn't do. I mean, Andy Reid just doesn't run the football consistently. So they completely confused Mahomes, and they made that adjustment at halftime. So kudos to their defense. And they've got some just an unsung defense. They've got some talent enough. If you get just a couple of stops during the game, and Burrow, they've, been a, they've fallen behind a lot in the first half. So he's a second-half player. They're a second-half team. So if, you, if you're within striking distance, they're, they're not out of it. <laughs> Their yeah. offense can be unstoppable. And he is just – he got sacked nine times in Tennessee. They yeah. sacked him nine oh, times, that's that's and he won the game. It's unbelievable. He just keeps getting up, and it's it's almost like it ticks him off even more when he gets sacked. Like, yeah. you know, some guys will be like quarterbacks are shy in the pocket when they're getting sacked that many times. It's a totally opposite for him. So. Dude, also, too, what about the, what about the rookie kicker? Because oh, at the end of the day, so cool. When, oh, oh my god, listen. when you dude, when you watch this, watch the playoffs, bro, <laughs> these kickers are but this guy's like, oh, game's over. Like, what about yeah. this guy? Listen, I'm gonna let you know a little secret. I don't like kickers. <laughs> I, I've never liked kickers. I, I can't I can't stand when these guys are just blood and sweat right. and hitting each other, going down the field, and it comes down to the leg of a kicker. You know, a dude that's five five buck 40 <laughs> and it's just so but there are a few kickers i really respect that ball i don't know why just, my name his name is escaping me but the, the kicker in baltimore is one of the, the might oh, be tucker. The, is it tucker? tucker yeah yeah, yeah best ever like cl- yeah. just clutch yep this guy reminds me of him he reminds <laughs> me of him and yeah. the way he the way he kicks the ball flight, how high it is, not only deep, but it is uh, he launches it. And it is he doesn't like uh, barely in the upright dude is right down the middle all the time. Oh, my God. And high, high off the, the net. It's yeah. like he kicks a 50 high off the net. That's exactly yard. what I'm yeah. talking about. No, but yeah. so before he goes out to the ball kick. is like Tucker. Right. Yeah. Before he goes out to kick, he turns to the team and he's like, uh, we're going to the we're going to the Sam championship game now. Oh, we're going yeah. to the Super Bowl. And then he goes and that's kicks a kicker. it. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Wait, I have a super These kickers quick... that go ahead, go ahead. celebrate like punters. Well, you know, it kicks it inside the right. five. And they're like, I'm like, come on, dude, just go back to the spot. You kill me. Wait, I have one but... super quick kicking story I gotta tell you guys. This just popped into my head and it's crazy. Back in the day, I was at Cold Pizza, which is now first take, but back then at ESPN. My good buddy, Jay Crawford. Oh, I love Jay Crawford. One of the greatest He's men I know. He's a good friend of mine. Oh, tell him, I, tell him Chinch said what's up. I love I him. I hate to interrupt you. Listen to the sports department that we had in Tampa. Okay. I was the ugly duckling. I was there. Jay Crawford, Sage Steele, and Scott Hansen, who hosts. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. No way. 
Scott that Hansen. was our local news sports department in Tampa. That might be the best local sports team ever. Oh, my dude. God. Seriously. You all went nationally, <laughs> didn't we? Oh, man. Throw me aside. <laughs> that was our sports department. We had four men. Four person department, and that was it. Those four. Ah, Jay is wow. unbelievable. Best. I love That's Jay. Awesome. Great guy. But so, so, uh, all right, I'm with him. And it's uh, the Giants, as a Giants fan, we're playing the Eagles the day before. So it's Monday morning, and me and a couple of the other guys are standing there, and the Eagles kicked the shit out of the Giants. I forgot what game it was, but it was. I think it was a playoff game. You guys can cuss on this. I'm so jealous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can. We can. We're allowed to. You can say, oh, shit, Jim Day. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm on an MLB podcast. Oh, we bleep good. it out. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. No, oh, curse you away. Can. Fuck yeah. So, <laughs> so me and this guy, Brad, and there's a bunch of us, and I'm like, you know what? The Giants gave up. They sucked. They didn't care. Tiki's ready to go become a, a broadcaster. He doesn't want. And I go on this entire rant. And all of a sudden, I see this guy, Brad, is looking across from me, and he's just going like this, going like this. And I turn around, and Jay Feely was one of our insiders. And I turn around, and Feely was standing right behind me when I just unloaded on how much the Giants sucked. It was the most uncomfortable thing that's ever happened to me. Because Feely was not like a... Not like one of the skinny kickers. That dude has yeah, bigger Philly biceps jacked. than yeah, you do. He's big. He's uh, so, that's my story. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, dude, Jimmy, we got other stuff. I can, uh, Listen... <clears throat> the one thing I know about Cincinnati Reds fans and Cincinnati fans, Bengals or whatever, just Cincinnati fans in general, they they they, they, they get they get after it. You know, I mean, these guys get after it and they have a great time. We were yeah. we were thinking, obviously, I know there were probably some people shotgunning a few beers, but we didn't know we were going to find a, a video of a dude shotgunning a can of Skyline Chili. <laughs> Yeah. It's, have you ever, Jim Day? First off, have you ever done that? Have you ever shot? Oh my car? heartburn! Oh, uh, <laughs> I love Skyline Chili. I like. I know you do. I love it. I come to. I come to town, brother. I get a five way. I mean, I just, I just <laughs> dominate. I dominate it. So yeah. I know you love it too. But so shotgunning good. it, I yeah. don't, nah. Watch this. Watch this video right here. Watch yeah, this here. video. There's plenty of stuff on here. This guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. That's Skyline Chili in a oh, can. And so this guy's just doing a report on how all of these people are crushing Skyline Chili. It it might be the most disgusting thing I've I've ever seen. I sent it to the Casey guy was last a, night. like a like a like a minor league pro wrestler too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's huge. He got it in his beard too. He's like all in his beard. He's like, oh, yeah. like, oh. <laughs> look at this guy. This guy. Oh, that's it right there. It's so tatted oh. up. That Cincinnati right there. Like that's just old school. Let's get after it. Sky. I tell you what. Skyline chili. The first time I ever had it was when I got I got hit in the eye. Remember that my third day in the big leagues, boom, hit in the eye by yeah. David Jackson. I'm in the hospital, full red uni. First off, I look like a total tool. They they bring me in with full red uni on, them, eyes out the here. I'm like, oh god, I don't feel good. So I, I I'm I'm in that uniform. My parents had already left, you know, from opening day. They're on their way home. There's no cell phones. So I finally get a hold of my mom and like, mom, I'm in the hospital, took a shot in the eye. She's like, oh, shorty, we can't believe it. We're on our way back. So, bam, they turn back. They come back to Cincy. And that day, bro, my mom brings me like like a big thing of like skyline chili. And she comes in. She's like, Shawnee, she's like, they love this stuff here. You, This will make you feel better. A good skyline chili. And I, I open it up. It looked like a little like diarrhea. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Like, <clears throat> they love this? He goes, yeah, they love it. It's like a sweet chili. So I like was eating it out of the thing. I'm like, this is not good, right? But then, Jimmy, when I started to eat it the way it's supposed to be eaten, when you put the <laughs> yeah. pasta down, then you put the Skyline chili with 16 pounds of cheddar cheese on top, and then you fire some beans, onions on there with two conies on the side, and you crush them. I'm like, now I get it. This is what Skyline chili is all about. So when I saw that guy shotgun at a can, I'm like, that's that's not what Skyline Chili is all about. No, you've got to have the five way two conies. You know what I'm saying? Is that yeah. what you do? Jimmy? No, you you guys both. What do you do? You do the whole thing. You do the five way. How do you eat yours, Jimmy? What's your favorite? I I I love the conies. I love the conies, but I'm not an. I don't like onions. I, I don't know why. Mm. I just never like. I love the beans. I've never liked onions. So if I'm getting it, it's a three way or a four way. <laughs> but I'm definitely getting conies. Because oh. the you got to have the cheese. I mean, the cheese is like yeah. I don't know what they do with their cheese. I don't know if they what they put in it. If they put drugs in it or whatever, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but oh. there's something about it that makes you keep coming back. <laughs> well, dude, I the, the the secret I do is I get a large five way and with a side of chili, 
So what happens is that that cheese seeks up the first the first batch of chili. The cheese seeks it up. You're yeah. like, I mean, seeps it up. You're like, ah, yeah. I need more. Just so I, you get in there, the chili melts, and I and when I'm halfway through, bam, I dump another another bowl of chili on there. And then when I'm on my way home, it's like a three. Usually when you go Cincinnati to Pittsburgh, it's a three stop pee break. It's a three stop number two break on the way back after you've done the five way. There, uh, there it is. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I've never had All it. It's glorious. Oh, it so good. delicious, oh, you bro. Got, you got to try it. I used to stop in the, at the field journal one after every game. I used to stop and be like, hey, hey, what's up, Mr. Casey? I'm like, what's up, boys? Let's go. Uh, the usual. <laughs> They'd be like, here you go. They'd be having waiting for me. Five way, two Tonys. <laughs> they never charged me either. I'm like, thanks, guys. I really I think I brought up a couple of balls. Here's some balls for the. Thanks for the five way. Is it Jim? You and me can talk about this. These guys never have to pay for anything. It's kind of BS, right? Because we, <laughs> they're oh, yeah. so rich. They, I bet you didn't pay for one serving of Skyline Chili in your career as long as you were above 300. <laughs> well, he's I, always above 300, career 300. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure, so, Jim yeah. Day. Jimmy, don't even start, bro. There's no way you're paying for meals and sit there. Like, hey, look, it's Jim Day. Let's get Carlo and Johnny. Let's get him a free steak. I would never accept payola as far as you know. <laughs> as far as you know, that's great. <laughs> I know better. No, I know. I know what you would do. You're like, thank you very much. Don't you know who I am? Jim Day. Yeah. Right? You ought to see when I try to do an interview with Casey in a public setting. Yeah. G- getting him from point A to point B. <laughs> Is like taking a kid through it <laughs> through a through Walmart, but you've got to walk through the toy section, <laughs> and you can't get that kid over to the furniture section. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like, oh hey, I remember you. Yeah, I remember you, brother. Yeah, how you doing? You know that guy? Oh, I love that guy. Uh, so it's like over and over. People stop. Can I get a picture, Sean? Can I do this, Sean? Will you- oh my god. Oh, it's so good. When, when, so back, I have to block out like 45 minutes to do like a two so minute true. interview. So true. No, I, I remember back in the day <laughs> when I was at ESPN, again, uh, I'll name drop a little, but Harold Reynolds was with us and we're running around and it was uh, 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 the all star gala thing where, you know, you bring your kids and their families. And Harold sees Sean, who was playing at the time, with that, when he had this hair, the parted hair in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we all loved him, obviously. We loved him as a player and we loved him as a guy. And I had never met him before. And Harold, who is probably more spastic than anybody in the world, was like, hey, Case, can you do me a favor? Hang out with these guys for a second. I'll be right back. And it's me and, like, two other kids. And Sean's like, okay. And literally, Sean stood there with us for 25 minutes and talked to us. Like, hey, where are you guys from? What's going on? And I was like, holy shit, this guy really is like the mayor of Cincinnati. He is. Oh it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, and he, he, he can't can't turn down to talk to someone. <laughs> dude, like he, I remember. You, you'll feel guilty. So it's <laughs> yeah. like you got to, every single one, it take me 45 minutes to get him over here. <laughs> so true. Well, Jimmy, at college, at college, um, my buddies would not walk across campus with me. It's a problem I've always had. And I'm, I just, I don't know, man. I, I enjoy people and talking to people. And, hey, what's going on? How you doing? But my buddies are like, Case, we're, at, we're going to class. We're not doing this. We're not being 15 minutes late because you're talking to everybody on campus. So. Something's never changed, you know what I mean? Hey, wh- which haircut did you say he had? The long bangs? It was no, oh. it was like the parted 2004 butt part. It was down to here. It was <laughs> legit, though, bro. Yeah, it was, dude. I was hitting yeah. like 350 at the break. I wasn't was, touching that hair. I wasn't it touching was legit. Hair. <laughs> Are you, you, oh, uh, we pulling up there. We did have different haircuts. I mean, it's uh, as opposed to like the you know, another Cincinnati Reds great Pete Rose, 4,256 oh. hits, one haircut. <laughs> Yeah, and it's such the, it's, the, it's the, like helmet, a the helmet, the <laughs> helmet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so good. So that was the Pete Rose cut, the helmet. Hey, hey, just cut it right, right across here, and just leave. Yeah. Little, what? It, 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 it was look the same. It was one haircut. It might have been shorter it's or so longer. Good. It was one style forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so great. <laughs> hey, so Jim, we, we were talking before, and I think you actually mentioned this on your podcast with Sean. <laughs> Is he he's either number one or number two as the most viewed podcast you've done? And who's the other guy? It's certainly the most talked about whenever someone's bringing up a podcast. They're like, I I almost wrecked my car listening to Sean Casey (laughs) tell stories. I had to pull over because I was belly laughing so hard. Uh, Joey Votto is a fascination, fascinating guy and a fascination in this town. So his episodes 
are up there as well. Those two are, are one, two. Yeah. Hey, I want to Jimmy, I want to stay there for a second. Cause dude, you're a guy that's gotten close to Votto. Like, I don't think a lot of people get close to Joey just because it's a just, hard egg to crack. He, he's a hard Man, egg to crack. I mean, even, crack. you know, I have a good relationship with him, but I'm not close with him and stuff. I always thought he's a really nice guy, but like, you have a good relationship with him. Like you have got, you've cracked the code, which you do with most people, Jim. I'm serious. I'm just saying such a good guy. You're very respectful, all that stuff, but give us, get us inside the Joey Votto. Like what's he really like, man? And uh, do you think he's, do you think he's a hall of famer? Cooperstown? I think he's going to be one of those guys that there's going to be a deep discussion about the hall of fame. I, I think it's going to depend on the, the voters. Now the new wave of voters who are into on base percentage, OPS, um, yeah, he, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. The old school guys that are saying uh, he should probably hit more home runs, he should drive in more runs, even right. though you know he was on some down teams, so you can't control how many guys are on base. But to me, as far as watching the game, is he one of the elite hitters of his generation? Absolutely. Yeah, he's got an MVP uh, on his mantle which really, really helps when voters are looking at such things. I think he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be a deep discussion, and you're either going to be vehemently against him or you're going to be, no, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I a, think he will eventually get in. That's a great point. He's, also, he, Casey, th- there's something about when you when you finally click with him, like, Sean, you did one of, I don't even think I ever told you this, Sean, but one of the best interviews I've ever seen with Joey Votto was when you were on a field at the All-Star game, Sean, and you were like, explain your approach at the plate yeah. and he just he locked in and he was oh. just in it and it's and it's brilliant like he's got a he's yeah. got a a mind not like many people right you know yeah no there's no doubt he's uh he is fascinating very smart very funny by the way like, yeah. you're seeing over the past few years you're seeing this come out at first you not at all very very funny guy but very intelligent and he doesn't like to talk about himself very much. He doesn't like the public to know a whole lot about him. Um, but he, he's very giving over the past several years. He's been a guy that secretly, and he doesn't, he like, there are times where he's like, no, man, I, I don't want this on. I just please get away Right. where he's, you know, bringing um, almost like a make a wish day for these kids where he'll sit them in the front row and there was one recently this year that, I mean, I'm sitting right there. I'm four feet from it. <clears throat> it almost brought me to tears where this kid is just in awe and he's in the on deck circle. And he turns around to the kid and he says, you and me, we're going to talk all day. Okay. I'm going to be here all day. Every time I come up, you and me. Now, if you got any advice for me, lay it on me because I need it. So it, it's just you and me, you have a good time, but we're going to talk all day. Okay. And every time he came to bat, he would talk to him. He would lean down and talk to him in the on deck circle. When the dude's getting ready to hit. And it's stuff like that that he's been doing over and over very quietly. So he's got he's got a good heart. I'm not sure I've met a Canadian that doesn't. I mean, no, dude, the Canadians <laughs> are the best. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. The Canadians. Yeah, how do you are- get 30 Canadians out of a pool all at once? Say please. <laughs> <laughs> That's a start. It's uh, the, you know, they're nice by nature, but he's He's such an interesting guy. He's different. At first, he was very, um, you know, I don't want to say publicly awkward, socially awkward, but, you know, wasn't comfortable around people and still probably isn't in certain situations. Um, but when you're talking baseball and being locked in and working hard, oh, no one about it. puts in more time uh, than this dude. Now, he has let up a little bit because he knows his body at this age needs to, he needs to chill out and save some of the swings in his back, et cetera. Uh, and he's hitting for power now. I mean, look, th- think about this. He's hitting for – he's an on-base machine. You know, he's dead low, crouching right. low. And he's choking, choking up, up. Choking up, yeah. He's dominating that way. And then all of a sudden he said, I can't do that anymore. At this age, I can't do that anymore. So on the fly, mid-season, he did this mid-season. You know what? I'm just going to hit home runs now. And at 38, he does it. Crazy. No. Oh. It's great. Just and, and, and Jim, I'm going to hit for power now. I'm going to stand yeah. up straight. I'm going to choke down on the bat, and I'm going to drive the ball. And that's what he's doing now. And still elite. That's unbelievable. Like, to be able to do, people yeah. understand, to go from being crouched, choking up, taking, yeah. like, he was taking a lot of defensive swings. Oh, Next he's the know, master at a two-strike yeah. fouling it off to stay alive. He mastered well, I think, it. 
Am, am I right by saying this? I think wasn't it David Bell that that like benched him for a couple of days or yeah. whatever? He was like, "Hey man, take a couple of days off. You're kind of three grinding. days, yeah." And then three days three later, days. he came back. And he looked different, right? He got in the box, he's standing straight up, not choking yeah. up, and then he gave him deep. three days. He's like, "You know what? I'm just going to change now." <laughs> when he when he first came in the league, he was standing up and choking down, hitting for power, and then he changed, and now he's changed back. So that experience did help him. That it's not like something totally new to him. He just changed back. So, but to do that at this age, yeah, that's unbelievable. For real, for real? yeah. And Jim, and eight, who, who, eight, eight, eight games in a row, right? Was it eight or seven games? Seven yeah. games in a row, and on the eighth day, he would have tied the record and hit the top of the fence. Yeah, missed like, by that much. Yeah. Oh, and God. Jim, so, Jim, you've covered all these guys for so long, and like I said before, like you know, being able to hear Sean Casey talk about hitting is a whole. It's it's different. He's different. He's yeah. special about it. Joey Votto's similar. Are there other guys throughout your years who you're like? This guy's just cut differently. I understand why he's a superstar or why he's so great at his craft. <clears throat> well, Sean was definitely in that category. Um, Barry Larkin, mm. Barry Larkin for sure. Um, uh, Scott Rowland, he was with the Reds briefly, but yeah. a guy on a di- a guy on a different mental level. Um, so guys like that, there were some relievers that were really, really smart uh, as far as just thinking the game. David Weathers was really yeah, uh, a guy really great. thinking the game. Um, guys like that. Um, hey, how about special. this, Jimmy? When I, came, when I came back in 2008 with the Red Sox, um, well, I, got, I got a quick story for you because it's funny. You know, the crowd gave me an unbelievable ovation. It was so I was so grateful. Tito was great. Terry Francona was like, you're starting game one in Cincy. You know, I want to make sure. And, you know, it was a really great ovation, all that stuff. And, you know, whatever, tip my cap. So my last at bat, I come up on the on the third day. Uh, I get I don't start the next games, but I pinch hit on day three. I'm in the third game and I'm facing Stormy Weathers. There's a good buddy of mine. The storm that played in Cincinnati. I just played against him a lot. Mm-hmm. Great guy. And, you know, Stormy's got that little cutter. You know, he's kind of like just doing some things. He's got – he's not overpowering. He knows how to pitch, all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So, first off, I come up in that last at bat, and they, you know, not the bat shot case, and the crowd gives me a good ovation. But I stand out and tip my cap. And it wasn't really – the tip of your cap moment was game one. I looked over at Terry Francona, and he's like <laughs> – and I'm like, I don't know. One more, I'm trying to get one more ovation and tip my cap. So, so, in, so, by, so in that at bat though, two two, I think St- Stormy throws me a backdoor cutter. I, it was this far off the plate, like five inches. Ron Culp was like strike three, and I, you know, you're in Cincy. I want to do something. I don't want to punch out on a bad pitch. I turned to Ron Culp. I'm like, that's terrible. He's like, we well, got to swing the bat. I'm like, dude, it's five inches off the plate. It's a cutter. It's backdoor cutter. <laughs> I look at it, Weathers, and he's laughing. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like, you know that was a ball. You know that was a ball. Uh, don't, even, don't even try and do the old, hey, I got him, man. That was a ball. You know it. Uh, knows it. And I'm pissed off I can't hit in front of the fans that I just gave a fake standing ovation to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is beautiful. You know, there, there's been other guys. I don't want to. I, there's going to be guys that are maybe watch this like, you didn't include me in that. <laughs> you told me I was smart. Sam LeCure, who I'm working with now, is, is what the call. Oh, he's great, oh, man. He's cool. What a great, great personality, too. Energy. Energy out of control. That guy, that guy uh, yeah. LeCure. I, mean, I oh, got yeah. to meet him last year. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Wade Miley recently, he's another good thinking man's pitcher. He, you know, he's throwing 80, 889, which a lot of guys would call poop soup, but he, he's just <laughs> out thinking guys. He's setting them up, you know. Knowing he's reading swings, one of the arts that's gone away from the game for pitchers is reading swings, or reading not only swings but an approach. Pitchers back in the day, or the pitchers that still do it, can look at a guy how he takes the ball, and like I know exactly what he's doing, so I'm going to set him up. Right. That's that art is gone away, unfortunately. Yeah. Now they're just like, here's a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> well, in just- college, you got the coach calling the pitches from right. the dugout. Like, how are you supposed to? Learn how learn, to get learn anything. Jams. Yeah. The, yeah. The college game needs to clean that up. I mean, they got Absolutely. the coach. What is this frick? What are we, 10? Where the, yeah. co- the coach is in the dugout calling you? Pit- and yeah. especially these guys are grown men. I'm in college. Yeah. I'm 18, 19, 20 years old. I'm bench pitching 300 some yeah. pounds. I don't need a coach in the dugout telling my catcher what to put down. And then yeah. they also got the Tom Brady, Joe Burrow wristbands. Like, 
Uh, I'm, like, uh, I'm like, what? Are we, what are we, the one sport you don't need a wristband for is baseball. <laughs> That's a brilliant yeah. point. You got the All they have cards now everywhere to tell you where to play defense for. It's crazy. Unreal. Like I have some of the cards. I looked at it like, what? what are you doing <laughs> yeah. that? That's crazy. It's like, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, the pitcher, the coaches. Numbers aren't going on the back of the pitcher's baseball card. Right. It's the right. pitcher. He should be able to throw what he wants. He should be able to get out of jams, learn how to get out of jams, because it's his livelihood. It's his stats. Right. right. Oh, it, yeah. exactly. And the college coach is just the college coach is just trying to get the job at the next college. You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah. there are some great ones. Don't get me wrong. But generally speaking, you're getting a college coach who's, you know, if you're at a mid-D1 school, He's just trying to get to a higher end D one school. He doesn't care about his, the, the kids. He, that's why he's so nervous to call pitches so that he can, you know. Oh, we won yeah. thirteen games more yeah. this year, and I can move on. So, oh. don't get me on a soapbox. I love baseball, <laughs> by the way, fans. Out yeah, there. I love too. baseball. No, no, I'm dude, not one of those guys. Get no, off my lawn. I love. We it. love it too. But speaking of loving baseball, <laughs> the game has changed. The game has oh, changed yeah. since you've been in it to now. But the great thing about you, Jimmy, is you're in it every day. You get a you get a front row seat to really see it. You're in the clubhouse. You know those guys. What is different about the day, the games, the the game today than it was, say, ten years ago? Oh man, how long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are so many things different. Um, you know, I, I hate to start with analytics, but that certainly. But it, it's changed it. There, there's guys, I think they're thinking uh, too much up there at the plate. I think well, that's why we're seeing a lot of strikeouts. They're just thinking too much. Like, this is my hot zone. This is the pitcher's hot zone. Uh, I'm thinking about mechanics, my launch angle. They're just thinking about too much rather than see ball, hit ball. I mean, right. of course, you got to know tendencies. You got to, okay, he's, he threw me this, he threw me a backdoor breaking ball. So I, 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 he's probably going to, he's going to that well again until I make contact with him. So there are certain things to think about. I just think they're they're thinking too much. I think that when they come, one of the big problems is in the minor leagues where these high prospects are only like say let's say pitchers. They're only breeding them to pitch five innings. I mean that they're not letting Crazy. them go deeper to save their arm, so they don't know how to get out of trouble in the sixth or seventh inning. And it's like unknown territory. Like they get to 100 pitches and like my arm's gonna pull up. I'm gonna. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> So, and at the same time, they're not trying with these players. They're not winning as a team in the minor leagues. Now you may say, oh, it doesn't matter winning as a team in the minor leagues, but most of these guys come up together. So you've got to learn how to win as a team. These pitchers need to be in a situation when it's nut cutting time in the eighth inning with two on and a one run lead. You've got to learn how to get out of that. And in the minor leagues, they're not really putting them in those situations all the time. And winning as a team is not, that important so they get to the major leagues and a lot of these guys don't know how to win i mean if you're not winning in the minor leagues or you didn't weren't in a successful college program you haven't had the experience of nut cutting time to win i think that is a major problem wow. there's um, there's so much I mean, well, there's so man. much I could, well, on, I could go on and on but it's still well, i think great. I, I think that it's it, still there is, great. but i think the one thing about you know that gr- the, the one thing about major league baseball players is that guys pride themselves on is we're grinders we play 162 yeah. games in 180 days. We got 30 days of spring training. We're grinders. And, you know, you got to you gotta be careful, I think, sometimes in this game with too much trying to run it like a fantasy baseball team in the minor leagues, especially when you're developing guys, because I don't care what you say. If you want to win at the big league level, you got to have guys that can grind through uh, situations, wins. that can yeah. find a way to win, that can find a way. Because – yeah. Over the course of a year, there's just so much ups and downs, so much travel, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the emotional waves you run. You got to be able to like at times go, you got to be, you know, when the time get tough, you got to get tougher. You can't go yeah. sit a sucker thumb in the corner and say, well, they never, I've never been in this situation of, of adversity. No, in baseball, you're going to be there. The game puts it there for you. Like, might as well learn at the minor league level what it's like to be in the pressure cooker, right? And- yeah, no, no doubt about it. I couldn't agree with you more. But, you know, I will say this. The athletes, as far as athletes and as far as the physical ability to play the game, players have never been better yeah. than they right. are right now. Yeah. It is never – it is these pitchers. Sean, I'm down in the camera well. Mm. And to see these pitchers that come out of these bullpens, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're monsters. it's like in a lot of these pinch hitters, I feel bad for them because they're <laughs> yeah. pinch hitting against like you're, you're going to bring me in now. They're going to bring yeah. in this lefty that is like 
throws 109 it, miles an hour, right? No, it's these, so these relievers are, are unbelievable. I mean, I can see to a point why they pull these starters out after five, yeah. six innings yeah. because they've got the, these bullpen guys that are unbelievable. Well, as far as the athletes and as far as the game and the yeah. plays that players can make, and I'm not saying the great players of the past could play in any era, yeah. you know, but on a consistent, on a whole, consistently, whole 25 man roster, 26 now players have never been more athletic or better. No, definitely. Right you, you don't see the 165 pound six foot two inch leadoff hitter who runs no. a four, three anymore. Like you just, it's just yeah. gone, you know, but so you're right. Yeah. More, yeah. Jimmy, more athletic than me? Are they? Do they run better than I do? <laughs> Gracefully? Are they more grace? Are they more graceful than I was? Seriously? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I look like the Bushwhackers in WWE. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And then when you get the then when you get the first, it's like this big accomplishment. You go like. <laughs> 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 it's so good. It's Dude, you throw it was out such from a, left, it was left field. You're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> dude, dude. I was, bro. You know, you watch yourself. You know, run on like a highlight or something. You know, I'm like, who the hell runs like that? I'm like, oh wait, that's me. I'm like, I don't know why, but I just it must have been tight hips, yes. tight shoulders makes you look yeah. like you're ice skating in quicksand. Yeah. You know? No, you're like, hey, uh, what are those? Does what's uh, Apollo Ono? What did he do? The speed- yeah, he's a speed skater. <laughs> yeah, I look like a speed skater, but I'm but I'm in quicksand, dragging my. I remember Joel Skinner, my rookie year, and, and uh, swear to God, I just been second round pick. I'm raking. Uh, Joel Skinner's my manager in Watertown, New York, in Low A Ball, and he's like, pull me aside one day. He's like, hey, he's like, do you have like problems with your hips do you have like um does you have a, a disease or something in your hips like what no i don't have a disease what are you talking about it's like well you don't really lift your legs when you run i was like listen when you hit the gaps you could jog okay that's all i know <laughs> but you did a lot yeah you exactly lot. hey jimmy jimmy this is great really quick at the 90 at the at the uh 99 all-star game i'm in the, i'm in the um you know speaking about not running fast but i'm in the i'm in the um clubhouse and in the training room it's me, Mark McGuire, Tony Gwynn, Luis Gonzalez, and Jeff Bagwell. And I'm looking around like, the hell am I doing here? Like, how did I get, how did I get in this conversation, you know? And I, I have my video camera. I'll have to bring out this footage because I have footage of it. I gave it to the club. And he videotaped this. Anyway, um, and Lark was there, too. Lark was there, too. And to, uh, I was leading the league in hits at the time. I was hitting – I had 129 hits to break, I think. And Luis Gonzalez is like, Case, he's like, he's like – you're leading the league in hits, right? I go, yeah. He goes, how many hits you got? I go, 129 hits. He goes, how many infield hits do you have? I go, zero. He goes, now that's raking. <laughs> <laughs> how many infield hits did you, did you have? Any ever? I think I had like if yeah, I had I life. think I had like 18 triples and I think six infield hits probably. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Not, what the. Dude. Dude, the, the game I Outfield got thrown. fall down? Did he, he fall no, down? No, no listen to this. The game, yeah, the co- they collided. And I was like, hey, I'm in business. <laughs> Dude, the game I got thrown out from left field, unbelievable. First off, that's so ridiculous. Second off, my fourth at bat, bro. Jimmy, listen to this. The baseball gods were hearing me. They, they knew like, oh, man, we got to help this guy out. My fourth at bat, Garland throws me a cutter. Boom, my bat. So I hit a rocket my first at bat, rocket all three bats, 0 for 3, and I'm thrown out from left. <laughs> Fourth at bat, I'm like, I come up, the Detroit fans are like, boo, you, you suck, you hustle, we're, we're blue collar. I'm like, I'm the most blue collar guy out here. I didn't mean for that to happen. I thought the guy caught it in third. Jeez. So next thing you know, bro, fourth at bat, Garland throws me a nasty cutter in. I go to hit it. Bam. Bat goes into 85 pieces, firewood everywhere. Freaking ball takes off, and it pfft, it lands right behind the mound. Freaking here comes the second base with third base with Garland. A freaking safe at first is one of my only infield hits ever on the day I got thrown out. Thank you, God, for helping me out. <laughs> on a blooper. <laughs> it all evens out. Hey, hey there's right. something, I have to, something I have to get off my chest. Can I do that here? Please. Yes, yeah. you can. Can't okay. wait. I have. Oh, I thought you were going to play the Casey guitar. Bat. Oh, wow. No, I could do that too if you want. But, uh, <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing. Um, this is a Sean Casey bat. Now, I found out that 
when, when Casey was playing, he's like, man, is there anything I can do for you, brother? Anything that would be good for you? And I'd be like, yeah, bat, like a, you know, used bat would be great. Cause I'm one of those guys like Tom Cruise in the movie. Like I need my bat. I need my bat. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just pick up a bat. It just makes you think better. I don't know why I agree. I'm a nerd like that. So he comes out and gives me this bat and you know, there's a little ding on it. I'm like, cool. This is awesome. It has Sean Casey's name on it. Well, years later, I say, you remember that bat you gave me? And he goes, you go, no, I don't remember that bat. <clears throat> yeah, it's a Mizuno Pro bat. And he's like, oh, I was never what? with Mizuno. That's so weird. So I thought that was Charity a Marucci bat goes, the whole time. No, Charity only goes so far. He gave me a demo bat. <laughs> he, got it, he got it a no, foot bro, locker. No, that's, that's, that's not true. First off. <laughs> I need to sign that for you first off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's not true? Mizuno Pro. Were you ever with Mizuno? <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I didn't even think they made bats. They just make. <laughs> what you Wait, do, time Chase? Out. What did time you out. do? Time out. What did I you think do? I know, no, I think I know what this story is about. Did I give that to you in 99? No. This what? is later. Okay, no, I know what happened. I know what happened. So it's probably hanging around the clubhouse for years, like in the corner. You probably had to <laughs> dust it off. I'll give, I'll give him this hunk of crap. It was probably a demo. You gave <laughs> him a demo bat that somebody no, tried to. Gave me get- a demo bat. Jesus it doesn't have shot. a thing on it. You Holy can see it. Has been, it has been in the cage or somewhere. So it has been on the mark. <laughs> no. Greg but, Vaughn used to use Mizuno. I believe I, I ordered a couple, and maybe I never used it. But there you go, Jimmy. It's game you. John Casey <laughs> name on it. There's no Greg Vaughn on it. <laughs> no, I'm saying Mizuno sent me a couple. Hey, bro. Yeah, that exactly. Is a- Say you had demo back. Dude, that's a collector's piece, Jimmy. No one has a Sean Casey Mizuno bat. No one in the world. Yeah, ever. no one wants a Sean Casey Mizuno bat. <laughs> so, dude, you can sell that for $7.75 right now at the flea market if you want. That's all right. I thought I was a big deal. But I, I thought I was a big deal. You are a big deal, Jimmy. That's why I gave you the Mizuno bat. Because you're – there we go. Oh, Jimmy, he's he's going to make me jealous. You're going to bring out a real bat? Let's see Here what he well, has. This will just prove how much of a dick he was to you by giving you that bat. <laughs> Not Here only did he give me a Marooch. Uh, of course a Marooch. But he yeah. put my <laughs> name on mine. Oh. <laughs> you asshole, Sean. <laughs> Listen, all he right, gave these look. away. He gave these away like Tic Tacs one year when he signed with, Mar- <laughs> with Marucci, and he never I mean, gave you one. This was like I, I was like, oh my god, Sean Casey gave me a bat, and like forty five other people were like, oh, he gave me one too. Was, I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> there you Louisville go. Louisville Slugger was gracious to me. There you go. Genuine Louisville Slugger, red logo. <laughs> they were nice to me. I don't even know them. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Jimmy, yourself. I owe you a bat. A big I'm gonna yeah. get you a game oh, with your bat sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better mail that jersey behind you better be on at case that I'm jersey. That Jim Day. You I'm need to put that, that Day. overnight that to Jim Day for, for I'll your send that to it's oh, that coming was... in it's coming in the mail, Jimmy. You get that jersey. <laughs> I don't I don't want anything. I don't want anything. I'm good. I just oh, had to great. get it off my chest. I don't want anything. I'm not trying to have to make up for it. I just had to get it. All these this years, so I've great. been holding this secret, and I had to get it off my chest. Oh been my waiting god! Waiting for dude. the opportunity to drop that bomb. Oh my god, bro! That's brilliant. So <laughs> great. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. <laughs> I'm dying, Jimmy. Man, dude, we appreciate this so much of you taking your time to go. We told you ten minutes turned out to be an hour, which is like we appreciate yeah. it so much. Sorry, bro. No, that's great. I don't have to well, edit now. I, I I've already given Jim Day three hours of my life for his podcast, so it means yeah. he still owes us two I'm, hours. Yeah, and I know he's no coming. I know. No, I think I've given him four hours of my life. Oh, you give me one episode was 90 minutes. And I, know, and I know he's coming for another episode. This Absolutely. isn't over. Oh, you can, yeah. book it. you can book <laughs> it. Well, you owe him something for that shitty bat yeah. you gave. <laughs> oh, shit. I thought we were tight, man. Like, yeah, you have a great relationship with Sean Casey. Yeah, he gave me a demo bat. <laughs> Mizuno. Casey Mizuno. Wrong? They spelled Casey wrong More on it too. Young kids are like, what is Mizuno? What? <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> oh, what a it's way. Like a, it's like back in the day where all my friends, you know, had a Schwinn bike, but I had a Huffy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a pink seat. The Huffy with the pink yeah. seat. Oh, yeah, exactly. So hey, look at Jim Bay's Huffy. He's got the pink seat, the cushiony pink seat. He's going to go... J- He's going to go jumping in the woods right now in Cincy. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> so good. Oh, Jim, thank you so much, man, for coming on with us. I, will, I'm, my, I, te- I, I have tears in my eyes right now. <laughs> you got so got just now, Case. Okay, so oh, like, yeah, no. I'll just either. be... No, I think well with the bat. I'll be just sitting here with this fraudulent bat, yeah. thinking fraudulent Fraud- thoughts. Fraudulent <laughs> <laughs> oh my god bro it's so good it's so good oh, i'm done i'm done uh, well next time jimmy want to have you on i'm going to send you back you're going to bring it on it's going to be a signed sean casey or whatever company i decide to pick for you it's going to be awesome <laughs> it'll be great <laughs> little tykes little it'll tykes, be man. one of, yeah it'll be one of those wiffle ball bats with the big, with the big <laughs> red with the big red head <laughs> yeah the kids that the kid that couldn't make contact yeah, with couldn't tie his bat. shoes we just talked about that last week <laughs> <laughs> well Jim, Jim, Chins, you don't know this but jimmy and i text each other all the time with the super 70s guy because he's so oh, oh so good jim, right jim and i like two he's three times a week we text each other. Yeah. that guy is he's brilliant he's brilliant he's brilliant yeah. brilliant Anyway. He's Canadian. Grew up a Reds too. fan, by is the he? way. Yeah. Oh, really? Is he a Reds fan? He, well, he lived. I'm pretty sure he lived in lives in Kentucky, or at least did live in Kentucky. So oh, that's God. why you see a lot of the big red machine stuff on his feet. I think. Oh, it's so I believe. Good. I don't know. Oh wow. Let's get him out before wrong. Jim If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But he's brilliant, regardless. Jim just made that up. The guys, the guys from freaking uh, <laughs> Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. Man. Well, thanks again for coming on, Jim. Casey doesn't know how all to say right, goodbye. Boys. Jimmy, so, love you, brother. Love you, so, man. So awesome. We got to do this again, soon. man. Thank you. You're the best. You're the best. All right. See you. Chinch, support this week for the mayor's office is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0, baby. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code THEMAYOR at manscaped.com. I tell you what, though, I love these things, Chinch. I've had them. I've had Manscaped 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and this is the 4.0. This one has a new sleek design. It's perfect for guys like me, though, dude. I'm one of the hairiest guys going. That's a fact. and as the fact, and forever, man, forever, I've been looking for the best trimmers. Even going way back years of when I was playing, I'd always nick myself up, cut myself as the worst. These trimmers right here, man, they are the best. They are the absolute best. Trims up my back, trims up my arm, the jewels, whatever it takes. Yeah. But this trimmer is the absolute best, the 4.0, the lawnmower from Manscaped. I can vouch for that. I know Sean wears a sweater 24 hours a day, <laughs> 365 days a year, and he needs this. He sent me one. I'm so psyched. I shave with it. That's how good you got, it is. That's how yeah, and it. Chinch, I've tried every every one you can try, every clipper you could possibly buy, I've tried. Yeah. This by far is the best. Yeah, Sean puts the a best. clipper on his, it, it'll break the clippers, but not the Manscaper. Yeah. So every, here's what you got to do. Everyone should have this, bro. Everyone yeah, well, should have one of these. They absolutely should. So here's how you get it, okay? You get 20% off and free shipping with the code the mayor, right, Sean? The mayor? Yes. At manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com, and use the code the mayor. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped and you can look as clean as casey does now when he's when he doesn't need the manscaper it's like sasquatch there's that the people call it cops unbelievable lawnmower 4.0 go get it it's unbelievable <laughs> do it